Hey guys, I'm Angela and this week I'm going to be painting up the Orky terrain board that I built last episode. So without further ado, let's get started. So last week I built up this terrain board using about $25 worth of supplies and the GW kill team terrain because it's that new Orky stuff and I have that Orc army that I'm very, very hyped about. Yes. I will talk about it every time I have a video focusing on orcs. Now, what did we go over last week? We learned how to build this board up using a little bit of foam core, which we hardened with some spackling so that we could get it ready for the hot glue gun that we would use to attach our plastic terrain to the board. Then we reinforced it with some more spackling, then Mod Podge, and put a little bit of sand over top of it just to give us a nice ground texture to go ahead and start applying some paint to, which is exactly what we're going to be doing today. But before we do that, I wanna go over how I'm gonna be approaching this video because it's a little bit different from my other painting videos. I'm only gonna be working on one side of this board, but everything that you'll be learning here today can be applied to the entire model. But I'm in a little bit of a time crunch, gotta get this video out by Friday. This is a little bit of a bigger piece. So we're gonna be focusing on the one side. Now, we have that out of the way. Let's go ahead, take this downstairs, get it primed up in some metallics because we're gonna be using a lot of metallics on this today and get started. All right, we're down in the Imperial bunker. It's been a little while and we're going to go ahead and focus on getting this building primed up using some plate mail metal, which I have from Army Painter. You can use whatever metallic paint that you want. I'm specifically just going for something that is a little bit on the silver slash iron tone because that's really kind of the main vibe that I'm wanting to go for the piece. So we're gonna go ahead and spray up the building, primarily focusing on the building itself, trying to avoid the ground. It won't really matter too much if we get some silver onto the ground because we will be painting that over later in some brown tones. But if I can avoid getting it too much covered, I will. So I just wrapped up spray priming and I want to talk a little bit about the accessories that I added to the board to give it some more flavor. I'm going to leave these pretty loosely primed. I'm not going to worry too much about getting the silver on them too heavily either because I'm going to be doing some other color work and adding some other metallics to them. So it's going to be cleaned up pretty nicely. So I'm pretty happy with where we're at. I think we should head back upstairs and actually get painting. All right, we're back at the hobby desk and I'm really happy with how my silver spray prime turned out. It looks great, but before we actually move on to any of the other metallics on this board, I want to actually start with the ground because I'm going to be doing some dry brushing on that and it's gonna get a little bit messy and this way I don't have to really worry about being super clean because I can tidy up any of the silver color tone afterwards. So for the ground, I'm going to be starting with a dark brown opaque color that is oak brown from Army Painter. We're going to be painting this on to any of the portions where I basically had the stucco, sand, and Mod Podge combination. Kind of getting it actually up onto the metal bits because I did actually try to get some of the dirt up there to indicate that the orcs had like taken the stuff and like shoved it into the ground and that's how it's staying in place. So I really want it to sort of be built up onto the metallic bits a little bit. Once we have this base color down, we're gonna go ahead and move on to a highlight color, starting with Hobgrot Hide, which is a new color from the Oryx line from Age of Sigmar. And I think it's going to work great as a highlight on my dark brown tone that I've already laid down. I kind of ran out of Talar and Sand, so I figured this would be a great alternative. So we're gonna start by dry brushing this onto the base, making sure to hit all of the same areas, working with a relatively heavy dry brush, but making sure not to lose too much of that dark color beneath. Once we're done with that, we're gonna move on to our final highlight color, Tyrant Skull, one of my favorite dry Citadel paints. This is a really light bone color that we're going to put on lighter over top what we've already done with our Hogrot's hide, just to bring out further highlight and really emphasize that granular nature of the sand that we attached in with our Mod Podge. Once we're done with that, the base paint job is going to be done and we can start to move on to those metallics. I've finished painting the ground and I've given it plenty of time to dry so that I can now handle it pretty safely without having to worry about messing up the paint job that I just did. 
So we're going to now move on to actually painting the walls of our terrain. And since I'm working with an orc piece, which is kind of an amalgamation of a bunch of like ramshackled pieces just thrown together, I really want to emphasize that by playing with a little bit of color and specifically with some metallic paints to really block out some patterns and everything. Basically, the idea here is we're going to be using about three to four different metallic paints to sort of block out color and make sure that none of these colors overlap themselves. This is going to add some great variety. It's going to add some like differentiation between everything and make it so that the piece really stands out. We start seeing all of those really cool details that are all over this build because right now it just looks like one giant mess of things. So the first color we're going to be working with is going to be Night Scales, which is a really deep sort of blue black metallic color tone. And we're going to be using this kind of sparingly because of how dark it is. I don't want it to overwhelm or detract from any of the other work that I'm doing. And some of the other metallics I'll be using are a bit paler. So we're going to use this pretty sparingly, picking out only a few select areas. Once we're done with that, we're going to also add in some evil chrome, which I think is totally appropriate to the orcs. It's a little bit of a brassy color tone, a little bit lighter than some of the other brass colors we're going to be playing with. And this is going to add some nice variety and some like, I don't know, I feel like they're gonna have stolen this from like either, I don't know, some Imperial people or potentially some Tau. For some reason, I view like this color palette with some Tau metals and I don't know why. So I kind of like that idea. Then we're going to be putting this out a few more places than we did the dark colors. It's a little bit lighter, so we want to spread this color around a little bit more. Then we're going to move on and add some Rune Lord Brass, which is a great color from Citadel, which I like to use because it ties into the Necrons, which my husband runs, and I just like having a little bit of that color tone in there. It kind of ties in. Even though his Necrons themselves are not this color, I still feel like it is like a little bit of that in there. So we're going to add this color to it as well. Again, making sure that it doesn't overlap itself. And for this one, because it is a little bit close to the evil uh, sun or the evil chrome color tone that I used, I want to make sure to not get this too close to that color either, because they are very, very similar. Once we have that down, we're going to leave the rest of the panels in the silver tone that we've already have down for our base coat. We're going to maybe touch up some of the areas where I didn't get the spray prime fully if there's like a little bit too much black showing, but my spray prime was pretty solid, so I'm not too worried about that. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Well, while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. All right, all right, I know some of you are already probably in the comments calling me out on the fact that there's quite a bit of silver touching silver still. And last part, I talked about how you don't want to do that in this piece. Well, do not worry. We are going to take care of that here in a second with a couple of washes, but I want to move on from the metallics. The washes that we're going to be applying to the silver to help break it up further is first going to be a bit of Nuln oil, just to sort of darken it, make it feel like the steel is from a different location and everything, which we've got here. So this is our Nuln oil. We're going to be applying this, making everything a little bit dirty, a little bit darker. The other color that I'm going to be using that I think is a lot more exciting is Aethermatic Blue, which is a contrast paste, contrast paint that I absolutely love. It's going to add a little bit of a patina look to the steel, which I really adore. It's look, going to look a little bit too blue maybe right now for some of you, but don't worry, we're going to be adding some additional paint to this to sort of soften that down and dirty it up a little bit more. But for right now, I really like the splash of color that it's adding and how it breaks up more of my silver tones. The flat panels on my wall are looking fantastic and I really especially like how the color blocking worked out on this particular panel between the teal, the copper, and the dark steel. It just really worked out exactly how I wanted it to, and I'm very happy. But I want to go ahead now and focus on some of the details on this orky terrain, because while we've accomplished our amalgamation of a bunch of different metal tones, I now want to have a bunch of different colors on the cables that you see connecting into the tank that's on the front. So for that, I'm going to be using a variety of opaque color tones, starting with Dragon Red, which is a nice bright red color tone that I'll be applying to some of the smaller cables, as well as thinning down and using as a glaze over top some of the copper uh, coils that you see on the side of the wall. I almost forgot what they were called there for a second. Additionally, for the cables, we're gonna be using a couple of other colors, in particular, Crystal Blue, 
Goblin Green, and Aberlin Sunset. I really wanted to go with some bright, bold color tones, a lot of primaries with the green added in there, just because I felt it fit the flavor for my orcs, but you can pick colors that will work for your particular color scheme. In addition to my brighter colors, I did want to have something that represented a little bit of a rubber feel. So for that, I'm going to pull out some matte black and apply that to whatever's left of the cables that I didn't paint up in my bold, brighter color tones. Remember those barrels in the ammo crate that we attached during the build phase last episode when we were actually putting this board together? Well, what I'm going to do for those is I went ahead and I reprimed them using the plate mail steel, which is the exact same color we had used on the building. And I did that because of the original prime job that I'd gotten on them with the spray can was pretty speckly and I didn't want that for what I was ultimately going to do. And I decided how I actually wanted to paint these because I decided I knew exactly where and why these orcs took these crates. So for the barrels, we're gonna go with some contrast paint, Blood Angels Red, because they're explosive. And when the orcs saw them sitting at my Hobby Knights base, they looked at them and went, those have to go boom. And therefore they took them. What they don't know, because they haven't actually opened these barrels yet, is there's maybe some wine in there or something. Because if you look, there's like a little like cap or something on it, like right there, that kind of looks like a spigot. And so in my head, this is like, there's like Kool-Aid or something in here and or juice or like wine, whatever, some, some sort of fluid, whatever they're drinking. I don't know what it is yet, but there's some sort of non-explosive fluid in there. But the orcs think it's going to blow up for the ammo crate. We're gonna go a little bit more traditional. The orcs have stolen this from the Imperial Guard, so we're going to paint it up using some Militarm green contrast paint. And then finally, for the Aquilas and any skulls that might be on these barrels or the crate, we're gonna go ahead and paint those up using some Balthazar's gold. I want to be a little bit different from the gold color tones that we've used on the wall, just to help it stand out a bit more. We're in the home stretch and we just have a couple of washes to apply before you can really start wrapping this up. The first wash that we're going to use, we're going to use Agras Urshade over the entire walled surface. This is going to help unify the piece and really bring the colors together. Then I'm going to do a little bit of a spot wash using Cryptek Armor Shade to add a little bit of an additional patina to some selective areas that I feel need it. All right, it's late. I might be going a little bit crazy, but we've got one final thing that we need to paint up on this model, and that is this little bit of cloth that you see here. This particular terrain piece has a few organic bits on it, so I'm gonna go back over it with some wraith bone, and this is where I'm gonna pull out some additional contrast paint. I'm gonna go over the cloth using some skeleton horde. This will give it a little bit of a linen look, but you can go with whatever color might suit your needs. With the painting of the walls now complete, look how cool they are. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. We can basically call this piece done. However, I'm not quite satisfied with it because I want it to tie into my actual existing orc army. So I'm going to add a little bit of tufting to add in some flavor and variety. Because you see, I've got my snake bike orcs here and they have some, they're on the gamer's grass ready-made bases. And you can see those bright green tufts of grass. Well, I want to add some of those same tufts to my board with the intention of one, it adds a pop of color in without breaking the snake bite tradition of not really painting up too much of their armor because they don't really go for the bright colors. But it's me, I really like them. So this is a way for me to add that in. And by going with a variety of different types of tufts, as you can see here, I've got some tall ones and some very short ones. And I even have some in between sizes too. By going with a variety of them, I can add some texture in much like what the walls are already doing. There's a lot of different pieces and textures there. Having these different styles of tufts is going to continue that on. So let's get tufting and then we'll take a look at the final product. knew I was going to have fun building up a terrain board and then painting it, but I didn't know I was going to have this much fun. I am so 
freaking please with how this board turned out. It looks amazing between the paints that I put down on it, the usage of all of the tufts and everything. Like, I just love how this looks and it blends super nicely with my orcs. It definitely looks like it's something that they put up and built. And I absolutely love that I was able to like basically make them all work together, even though it's not a one-to-one -one build for like what I'm what was on their ground and everything. Gosh, I'm so excited. I'm just like stumbling all over my words. I'm just, I'm so happy with how this turned out. We went from building it up using spackle and foam core and hot glue and putting a terrain board together. And then we went and put some paint on it and it just looks stunning. This was a super fun project, probably one of the largest projects actually that I've worked on. And I'm very, very pleased with it. Let me know what you guys thought of it down in the comments. What would you do differently? Do you like the way that I put on some of the metallic paints and everything? I'm really happy with it. But I wanted to give one final extra thank you to my patrons for supporting us and allowing us to make content like this. You can join them by finding a link down in the description below. But in the meantime, I have been Angela, you have been watching Hobby Night, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.